So welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, we cover just about everything dealing with, well, country living, rural living, homesteading, etc., including backup power and soon to come potential off-grid power. Now this is the EcoFlow Delta Pro, probably the most adaptable and powerful portable power station made. You're talking 3,600 watts continuous, 7,200 watts peak. It can be adapted and built to be more powerful, up to 240 volts. You can add batteries to this, all kinds of stuff. So here's the front display. It'll show you input uh, wattage, output wattage, time remaining, all your typical features that you're used to seeing. Has USB charging ports, 20 amp, uh, 120 volt outlets, and a travel trailer. RV people should love this one. A 30 amp, 120 volt output. Has a handle because it's portable with wheels. You can move it around. Moving to the side right here, this is all your 12 volt hookups. Has a 30 amp up top, a 10 amp in the middle that you're used to. And you see that little port down there on the bottom? You can actually hook up a wire here and add an external display to this unit. So if it's mounted outside somewhere, say an RV or a home, you can put a display inside. Now this is what I love about this unit. That right there is the Xfinity port. You can hook up another Delta Pro to this to make 240 volts. You can do EV fast charging right there. Um, speaking of charging, this thing will take up to 1600 watts of solar. It has a built-in solar charge controller. That's amazing. You can add two external batteries that you see right here. So you can truly build this unit for off-grid capabilities. Once we flip the top cover right here, you'll see where you plug in that up to 1600 watts of solar. And you have a plug-in port over here for a wall outlet. This thing is the fastest recharging unit in its class, too. You can recharge from wall outlet alone in about 2.8 hours, which is amazing for the 3.6 kilowatt hour battery that's inside. So you have a ton of storage capacity with this unit. There's some wheels. If you want to make it portable, that's what makes these units so nice over like your DIY solar systems. You can run off-grid stuff. You can... Take these out uh, with the wheels, make them nice and portable. You can go run power tools, whatever you want. We have a lot planned for the future of this as far as solar backup, uh, especially with the adaptability of this unit. So I'm gonna provide links so you can go read the specs. I don't wanna bore you with all that. Let's show how this can potentially run a shop over there and a house. I have two different solutions on how you can plug this in, nice, clean, professionally, and well, legally, and it keeps you from running extension cords all across your house because people who are probably buying something in this price range are looking for a true backup solution or a true off-grid solution. This unit right here alone could easily run a cabin or something and you're gonna want a more professional hookup. Let's cover that. Now, a lot of you may have an adapter just like that. And as you can see, it has four hookups. That's a 240 volt generator hookup. Whereas if you look on the front of this unit, we have your traditional three pronged 120 volt hookup. Now, if we were to have two of these Delta Pros, we could go out of their dual voltage hub right into that connector right there. Zero issues, fully power up our 240 volt panel inside and run everything from potentially our AC to our well pump. That's where we're hoping to head in the future. Okay, so now the real question is, can you actually hook up a generator like this to a four-pronged typical generator plug right here? So what you have to be very cautious of is that you don't run or power up any 240 volt appliances inside. Chances are they're just most likely not gonna start. This is a 120 volt unit. But I'm trying to show you an example here of if you're buying one of these and you think you may be gonna double up down the road like I'm hoping to do, and you want a 240 volt in, you might as well have your home set up for 240 volts. So as soon as we're done with this test, I'm also gonna run you over to the shop and show you the proper piece of equipment that you should install, a generator transfer switch that is set up perfectly to run off of a unit like this. So I bought this adapter online. It's called a TT30P. This is your typical RV hookup right here. This is what we have on the front of the unit. It's your full power 30 amp, 120 volts. This adapter right here has a jumper on the inside. So now you can see we have four hookups on the outside. The same exact four hookup over here. This is called an L1430R right here. It's a 30 amp rated 240 volt output. So what this jumper is essentially done inside is taking three wires, jumped over to the other hot because a 240 volt 
hookup right here has two hots coming in, 120 volts, 120 volts. So what that means is, well, now we're powering up both sides of our panel inside to 120 volts, but all we're providing is 120. So any 240 volt appliances will not work. And we have to be very careful about how many 120 volt circuits we power up. That's why this isn't my favorite way to wire one of these in because you could potentially overload the unit. Now the good thing is when this unit's overloaded, it's got overload protection in it and it powers itself right down. So EcoFlow also has a nice generator plug right here. I'm gonna hook this into this adapter I got online. By the way, I'll list all this down in the description. So let's hook that in, twist lock. Now we're converted over to four wire. Plug that in the front of the Delta Pro. All right, so now we have got the unit powered on. We're lit up, 120 volts is going to here, although we have to go flip the interlock inside the house. Okay, so let's come inside to our main panel. I have what's called a generator interlock kit right here. It's a very basic piece. So as you can see, we have main power coming in right now, and this is my generator plug hookup out there. It's two 120 volts in, and we just jump it across both. So we're technically bringing in 120 volts to both sides of the panel. That's not a true 240 volts. I just wanna get my point across there. So what this generator interlock does is this does not allow me to turn on generator power to this panel while we're having power coming in from the power pole. So it's about to get dark. I'm gonna flip this off. This slides up, then I can flip on the generator and I'll leave this one outlet on for the lights in here so you can see. So let's go ahead and kill power coming from the transformer and the grid. Now we can slide that up. So here is the reason I don't like this interlock for a 120 volt generator. Now you, your family, anybody that's in here messing with these breakers has to make for sure they don't turn any 240s on. Again, I don't think nothing would happen, but you're not sending the correct voltage to your 240 volt appliances inside. You also have to be very careful about how many of these breakers you flip on. So the cool thing is the EcoFlow app. Now I can monitor my unit even though it's outside, straight from my phone. See, we're pulling 35 watts right now, which is powering up the lights here in the pantry. And I can go throw on breakers in the house, monitor this, and make sure we don't overload the system. Now keep in mind, we have 30 amps of 120 volts available. It would be very hard to overload that. That's a very powerful unit. So here's what I would do in an outage situation. I'll flip on my few main breakers that I wanna run, like say my deep freezer right here, for example, my refrigerator, things that are, I just really wanna power up, certain lights throughout the house, and maybe a TV. It could be a hurricane or a major outage for some reason. You're gonna to wanna to turn your satellite on, kinda of see what's going on in the world. All that can easily be ran by that device. Again, 3,600 watts. Okay, so here we are in my shop. I have the Delta Pro brought over here and we're gonna wire up a different way and one that I feel is more correct for a 120 volt generator. And that is to use what is called a generator transfer switch. So the reason I prefer these, first of all, this is a 240 volt one, but I have it wired up to accept 120 volts because of that jumper that I showed you. So you'll see that we'll jump across just like we did the main panel in the house. But the beauty of these systems right here, as you can see, you have three way switches. So the bottom allows power to run off the grid Flip to the middle, you're completely off, killed the circuit. So up, and now you're running off of generator power that you plug into here. So the beauty of this system is you choose the circuits that you're gonna power up. So should you be in a power outage situation, nobody can go in and flip the wrong breakers on, overload your generator, anything like that. So you're gonna pick a few select critical circuits in your home or your shop that you can run off of generator power or right back to normal line power. So I want to go ahead and let y'all know, have no fear about this. I just made a very detailed and dedicated video to wiring in this transfer switch. I'll put a little banner up top here. You can go watch it and come back to this video. And I'll also put it in the description of this video so you can watch it after the fact. But the reason I really prefer generator transfer switches for 120 volt generators or even 240s, if you have someone else, say a family member, a child, somebody else that's not familiar with all the breakers in your main panel, you can put dedicated circuits on this. It's very straightforward. You can tell them, hey, if I'm not home in the event of a power outage, will your generator over here, plug your cord right in, very straightforward and simple. 
You've got your circuits labeled up top right here. One of them I have that's critical, for example, is our storm shelter. And you can tell them to flip off of line power up to where it says generator. Now that circuit is running off the generator. The other good thing about transfer switches or that interlock kit that I showed inside the house is it keeps you code legal and safe. As in, a lot of people will backfeed a main panel off of a generator without these devices. And if you forget to throw that main breaker off, you've just literally energized the lines outside and you're putting the electrical workers at risk that's trying to restore your power. All right, so let's take a look at how this transfer switch works. So I now have 120 volt power on. I'm using that special plug that has the jumper in there. Since this is technically a 240 volt box, but it's perfectly safe to do what I'm doing. And for example, I know that B, which is now flipped down to line power, is running my shop light. So if I flip to the middle position, just killed my shop lights. And if I flip up, we are now running off of the generator. It's that simple. So EcoFlow also sent me out a set of their very nice foldable 400 watt solar panels. All right, so check this out. How is this for portability? All right, so in this bag right here is four 100 watt panels that are all connected together. They fold up nice and easy and they're portable. Let's go pop these up outside. It's later in the afternoon. Here it is January, so it's winter time. We're not getting full sun, but let's see what kind of power we can pull out of these. All right, so here's kind of a neat feature. The case itself is actually a stand. So you'll flip it forward. It's got a couple straps and hooks, and then the back side of the case is nice and hard and acts as a base. Let me show you. So there's the panels folded out. You hook into the bottom of them. Then you flip this back side up. There's some more hooks right here. And the cool part is, I don't know how well y'all can see it, you can actually zip the bag back up to change the angle of this and ultimately the angle of your panels. Now this wouldn't be an honest review if I didn't talk about something that I don't particularly care for. While this unit is very portable on hard pack ground, it does have relatively small wheels. I would love to see those upgraded in the future and a little more ground clearance on the unit because the wonderful thing about this is not only does this give you off-grid capability, but a lot of people want to go to this versus other systems because it's portable. And larger wheels would allow you to go across softer or more uneven ground. Just a minor gripe, but thought I'd mention it. Now I've been testing these panels for a couple of weeks now, I'm telling you, I'm really impressed. One other thing, EcoFlow, I know you're gonna watch this. If you're listening, something I think would be amazing to do. So this panel right now is set up with two wires already ready to go for you. The problem is it's four panels and I cannot change wiring them in series or parallel. And they've doing that for a reason because this panel is kind of set up for the Delta and Delta Pro units. But what if you're like me? I have a River 2 Max, I have a River Pro, some of their smaller units, love them. I would love to be able to invest in one large panel and potentially take two panels out of the equation and charge my devices. Now what I could technically do is fold the panel over there, get it down to 200 watts, which is safe enough charging wise for the other units that I have. But if that panel were to blow open or fall open and catch the sunlight, now I'm sending 400 watts to a unit that's designed for 200 watts, talking about my other ones. I would love the capability to say, disconnect two of the panels. Then you can invest in one large panel that maybe will charge multiple devices. All right, and just that quick, we're plugged right in. It's a very simple process. The unit will automatically kick on and check this out, already bringing in 335 watts. I haven't even positioned the panels correctly yet. It's telling me I'm fully charged in 52 minutes. Now, as y'all can see, the sun is behind some haze. That really does make a difference. Also, for example, watch this. I'll put my hand right over the panels. You're looking at the power, watch this. Immediately drops down. I can tell you that these panels, I'll show you a picture. I pulled them out the other day will produce the full 400 watts. All right, so here I am setting up the EcoFlow Delta Pro. This is the next morning, and I wanna see if I can run the house all day long off of this unit. So I've already shown how to hook that up, and here's what's gonna be fun. We're gonna run some solar panels as well. 
and see 120 volt now we can't run 240 volts i explained that but if we run everything in the house like we typically do on a normal day from microwaves everything else i'll leave all the parasitic draw items on will it drain the unit will the unit recharge and will it power the house we're about to find out so i'm throwing off my 240 volt breakers right here you need to do that because you can't power those up i'm actually going to go ahead and throw all the breakers themselves off and i'm about to completely disconnect from the uh grid power and we want to make for sure that uh, we have all these breakers off before we flip over to the generator power that way there's not too many things running at once and you risk overloading the unit this is the proper way to do it so I've just swapped the unit over and you can see all the little jump ups on the graph down there that is actually my freezers and refrigerator compressors kicking on since we just threw power off and now it's coming back and this 470 watts that you're seeing right here 450 that is the highest 120 volt wattage pull i experienced the entire day on the house with the exception of whenever i ran a microwave for lunch you can see i'm running lights i'm actually upstairs in my office working today charging computers editing and the fan was running right there you can see all all the parasitic draw every outlet's charged in the house the microwaves going refrigerators going so this is just a normal day for us i also want to plug in and check with these devices often you won't get a good voltage and i want to make sure i'm getting good clean hertz so check this out 120 volts continuous out of this unit which is great typically i see 110 volts out of these units and look we're running a clean 60 hertz down there so this is a little while later i want to show you it was two hours later before I actually started getting my first little bit of sunlight hitting the panels and getting some solar charging right there. You see the house is now settled out, 182 watts out, 167 in. This is an additional hour later. I'm finally getting full sun on the solar panels. I'm bringing 348 watts in and the house is now settled out to 60 watts. So I'm warming up lunch right here. Look at the output. The microwave has just ran me up to almost 1800 watts. We have a huge, very powerful microwave, but the unit's handling it absolutely no problem. Still pulling in 348 watts of solar and something like a microwave is not gonna run very long. And you can see the microwave just cut off right there. Now the house is back to only pulling 100 watts. This was a bit shocking to me. I just kicked the TV on and we went from, well, 100 and something watts up to over 300. I did not realize a TV would pull that much. It's actually pulling three times the power of my refrigerator compressor running. So let's talk about the efficiency of the unit right here. You can see up top that the unit's actually showing that I have lost a percent of power because whenever you charge a unit and actually bring it in like this, power in, you have conversion losses from storing the power, converting it over in an inverter or a converter to 110 volt power. There's always some uh, losses that's going to happen with that. This unit has been tested and shown by other YouTube channels to be 93% efficient in the conversion, which is excellent in this industry for products like that. But that's why you can see that even though my input is slightly higher than my output, the unit keeps showing that I've lost a slight amount of battery. So that's something to note. All right, y'all, as you can see, the sun started to get low in the sky. We've probably got about another hour before sunset, but I wanted to show y'all something. And by the way, I have only moved these panels about three times today. I have not sat out here and babysit them or nothing. I have seen no need. They have been consistently pulling in 350 to 370 watts, no matter what time or tension I gave them. Now you wanna see something cool? We're still powered up on the house. Check that out. We're pretty much fully charged, 99%, bringing in 330, right at 340 watts, still consistently putting out only 100 watts to the house. Let's talk about that real quick and wrap this up. So I tell you what, I have learned a heck of a lot running this test today. So while it hasn't been a full day, I've gotten more than enough data to see how this system performs on the house and I'm quite impressed. So as you can see, we run a very efficient house. Again, I have everything on in there. There's parasitic draw. Now, of course, there's things we could do. I could go in there and run the dishwasher, which we run about twice a week. That'll pull a decent amount of power for a while and a few other things, but I really ran the house today how we normally do. We're not big TV watchers and I was shocked to see that our TV literally pulled 
three times the wattage that our new refrigerator does. That kind of blew my mind. And it lets me know our new refrigerator is very efficient. It's pulling about half the wattage that our other refrigerator in the shop does. So monitoring all this uh, really showed me what I need to know moving ahead in the future. So the cool takeaway of this is, yes, you can actually run your house off of a set of panels like this and a device like this back here behind them. So should we ever get in a major power outage situation, well, it's nice to know that this can still allow the house to run just as convenient as normal, minus your 240 volt devices. But what today's test has also showed me, if I were to get a second Delta Pro, link them together, I think I could easily run this entire house. Now, what you would want to do in that particular instance is add a couple of batteries to them. Um, I don't even think I would need to do the full battery bank looking at how efficient our house is. But you've got to be prepared and you've got to store power up well for days that just aren't sunny and you're going to continue to pull from without adding back. Now, the other exciting thing about this is I ran the house the entire day. I've got the unit topped off with a 400 watt panel set. Well, don't forget, one single unit can take up to 1600 watts of solar input. So if you have a decent solar array out here, I could way more than produce what my house pulls even with me running TVs and just going crazy in there. And we could continue to put back and not only charge this Delta Pro, but what if we had a second Delta Pro battery added to this? So a solar array, I think is gonna be the ticket moving forward for us and probably moving to another battery. But what I'm really wanting to move toward is 240 volt application. Now, I should also mention, we've made some smart choices in the house. We've got propane water heater, propane stove, stuff like that. So that really allows us to not use a whole lot of power. Our biggest power user by far is probably our dryer. My wife does a lot of clothes drying throughout the week and it pulls around five to 6,000 watts for an hour to sometimes three hours, depending on how much laundry and how many loads she has to do. It's probably our biggest user, even bigger of a user than our central AC. We're only running a two ton AC in this house because we insulated it so well with spray foam insulation. So I can't answer all of the off-grid questions today. We're going to continue to do testing in the future. And as I told y'all, this year, no matter what I wind up going with, we're moving more towards solar backup. I want to get away from dependency on fuels in case there ever is extended outages. Well, your fuel could be disrupted. So the exciting news is I've already invested in some solar stuff that'll be coming up here on the channel before very long. And we're going to continue to move forward with some off-grid backup.